Good morning and welcome everyone towards Automation Days Asia 2021. My name is Jem Willem Middelberg and I'm incredibly pleased to be your host for the next two days. Thank you so much for taking the time and effort to join in this conference in which for the next two days, we are going to present you with all kinds of fascinating topics with regards to automation. A warm wor wor uh, word of welcome also towards all of the great lineup of speakers that we'll be presenting today. I highly encourage everyone to browse around the online calendar and start bookmarking sessions uh, that are of particular interest to you. Over the next two days, we will have a variety of different speakers that all have one thing in common. They're all considered global experts when it comes to automation, and they will have fascinating stories to tell around automation, automation best practices, and robotic process automation. With this event, we're really trying to establish a global community of automation experts and everyone who's interested with doing this. Take the opportunity to learn during these sessions. And what I'm strongly encouraging to you to do is to ask a lot of questions. For this session, as you might see, we're using the Zoho Backstage platform. And the reason that we've selected this platform is that it gives you the opportunity to interact with the speakers in a very engaging way. So even though this conference is presented virtually, you still have the opportunity to interact with the speakers. So I strongly encourage you to ask questions post comments, use the chat, and also uh, send your reactions during each of the sessions. You will see all of the buttons at the bottom of the screen in order to send reactions. And on the right-hand side, you will see buttons that you can use in order to ask questions or to use the chat. There's also the opportunity to network during the, this event. On the left-hand side of your screen, you will see a button for networking. You can join tables from our speakers and sponsors and interact with other conference attendees. I strongly encourage you to make you most use of these functionalities to give you a very engaging experience of what an online conference in 2021 looks like. It is my great pleasure to start kicking off today's session. And I will present to you a first session around the wonderful world of automation and how automation best practices are th uh, thriving and steering decision-making towards the future. But before I do that, I would like to also extend a warm welcome and a word of appreciation for our sponsors, which are depicted here on the screen. As you all know, this event is hosted completely free of charge. So everyone has the opportunity to join. I'm incredibly excited to announce that over 350 people have logged in towards uh, these sessions and have been making use of this opportunity. And this would not have been possible without the generous support of our sponsors. Symphony Summit is our platinum sponsor that is providing most of the um, um, sessions and has been uh, able to give us uh, quite a good materials for early use of the platform. I also want to specifically thank our gold sponsors, the Service Automation Framework Alliance and PeopleCert. And of course, our silver sponsor, UiPath, who is a leader in robotic process automation. This event would not have been possible without the sponsors. And I wanna deeply thank you on behalf of Cybient for participating in this session. Before we get started with the first session itself, I also would like to take a, a quick moment to introduce myself. My name is Jan Willem Middelberg and I will be your host during these two days. I will be moderating and introducing all of the other speakers and I'm going to be um, asking the questions based upon your input at the end of every session. I'm one of the co-founders of Cybient, and we're presenting today's session to you from Kuala Lumpur. 
Besides uh, uh, leading Sybient on a day-to-day -day basis, I also have a strong passion for doing these kinds of presentations on almost a daily basis. And I'm also uh, a, a writer that has written books around automation and big data. Today, in my keynote presentation, I will be presenting some of the concepts around service automation that have been applied but with companies throughout Southeast Asia. The primary reason that I'm showing this slide is that if you want to get in touch with me during or after the conference, on the left-hand side, you will see my contact details. If you have any questions or you would like to know more about a particular session or want to get into contact with a speaker or just have any gen general inquiry, I highly encourage you to reach out to me either on email, LinkedIn, or Twitter. So make use of these opportunities and already start your day with networking, and in this case, with me. I also want to say a quick couple of words around Sybient, our organization that has been uh, putting an incredible amount of effort with completing and composing the program that you're participating in today. Sybient is actually an uh, acronym, which stands for Cyber Information and Technology. And this is exactly the theme of this conference. Uh, conference. We're going to talk about how you can use technology and cyber uh, technologies in order to help your organization win in the data economy. What we're really going to look for in the next uh, the two days is to provide you with cutting edge insights, new technologies, but also around skills and knowledge that you will need in order to help your company make use of its data in a more productive and more efficient way. So that's the company that will be hosting these two day events. Good, that's it so far for the small, small little introduction of what you can expect and some of the uh, key organizers of the conference today. I always take this opportunity to, in the first five minutes, kick off the conference. But that's just a very short part. I have the great pleasure to start introducing today's keynote. And I've uh, labeled this keynote session as welcome towards the age of automation. And in this particular section, I'm going to be sharing some of the latest insights with regards towards the automation and developments. We're going to look at some of the practical elements of automation and why it's so relevant today for almost any company. But more importantly, I'm going to take you on a journey. And in that journey, I will explain what are the key next steps that you or your organization could take whenever you would like to get started with automation. So I hope to be providing you with some inspiration and insight on how you can get started in this wonderful world of automation. As I mentioned at the very early beginning, I strongly encourage everyone to ask questions throughout the session. I will start moderating these questions towards the end, but note that if you would like to ask any questions in, in between, please feel free to do so. The easiest way is to use the Q&A function, which you will see at the right-hand side of your screen. We will also monitor the chat, but in order to structurally look at the questions, that is the best way to get your questions across. Good, without further ado, let's get started and give you a warm welcome towards the age of automation. And I would like to start and open today's conference with a very simple, but yet very fundamental question. Why are we talking about automation so much? And on the slide in front of you, you see a number of key organizations that have been rising very, very rapidly in recent years, especially across Southeast Asia. Most of us will be familiar with Netflix for watching films and series, Spotify for listening to music, Booking.com for which you can book hotels almost anywhere on the planet, but also more local examples like Grab or Lazada who have been transforming the way that we interact with each other and how we work with each other. And before I get started with today's explanation, I want you to take a quick moment and take a step back 
because even though these are all very diverse companies, I would like you to, to think for a moment about what all these organizations have in common. The answer um, is going to be pretty straightforward. But before I start with looking at some of these commonalities, I want you to ask yourself another question. Have you ever spoken to anyone who actually works at these companies? If you had a question, if you needed support? And I'm not meaning the grab driver who is bringing you from location A to uh, uh, location B, because that's technically not somebody who actually works for the company. There's a very high chance that even though you are using a variety of these services by yourself and that you have been ordering products or, or services from Lazada or have been ordering food or rides through Grab, that you've never actually spoken to anyone who actually works there. The same is true for other online services like hotels, like films, like series. You're all consuming these services on a daily basis without actually speaking to, to the people who work there. And this is significant for a variety of different reasons. It is significant because it means that the delivery model that these organizations are using is different. It is also significant because it means that this delivery model is actually working. All of the companies that we're seeing here on the screen are hugely successful in their own right. Yet all of these companies are providing completely different services. So what is the common factor? And that's what we're, I'd like to open with today. The answer to what all the, of these organizations have in common is actually quite simple. First of all, we've already noted that all of these um, companies are hugely successful in their own right. They're frequently labeled digital disruptors or um, uh, powering the next data economy. They've been growing very rapidly and are also um, um, grown very rapidly in terms of growth and finance. The second thing that I want you to realize is that all of these uh, organizations are actually service providers. They're providing a service to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, you can actually order products through some of these platforms, but the platform itself is what is delivering the service. And the last, and that is obviously the most interesting part from this uh, presentation's point of view, is that all of these services are completely delivered to you in an automated fashion. From the moment that you click your phone to order a grab or to order food or to order any kind of product or to listen to music or to book a hotel night, the whole process in the back end is automated. These companies have been able to grow so tremendously rapidly because they have an automated delivery process in the back end. And that is really fascinating because it shows that there is a huge demand and appetite for automated services. And it also shows that if you start to think about an automated delivery model, that you can start to start a delivery model that is in demand and that will also hopefully get you towards a way in which you can grow towards the future. So let's dive into that a little bit more in detail and start thinking a little bit about what are some of the key drivers behind these automated services? Why are they so successful? And is there a particular way in which we could copy, mimic, or adapt and adopt some of these aspects around these service providers? So if we break down these service delivery providers, we can see that there are a number of key aspects, which are reasons why you should start caring about service automation as well. First thing to note, and this was exemplified by the companies on the previous slide, is that automation makes things scalable. If you have developed an automated service or automated delivery model, you can start to deliver services not just to 10 or 100 or even 1,000 people. You can scale it up very rapidly. Yes, you will need to have some infrastructure constraints to deal with, but more, uh, uh, on a broad scale, um, uh, automation makes for scalable business models. 
The second reason that we should care about all service automation is that automated services by definition become data driven. As soon as you start to engage with your customers in an automated manner, you can track and trace everything. You can see when they click, at what their behavior is, at which particular buttons people start asking to, for services. And based upon that information, you can start to optimize and automate. A third and not to be underestimated part is that automated services are user-centric. They're built around a user itself. If the user experience is not very good, then you're probably, uh, um, probably most likely going to go towards another service provider. Or you might delete the interface like a, a mobile application with which you communicate with that service provider. Fourth, and this is obviously uh, typically referred to as the CFO argument, automation can bring cost benefits. Throughout the next few days, we're going to hear from different speakers on what kind of cost benefits can be uh, achieved through automation. But the whole idea of using automated delivery is that you are able to deliver services more, fit, uh, more fast and more efficiently. And this also includes significant cost savings on the long run. And then last but not least, in order to start delivering automated services, you can start to set up a framework in which you can use these automations in order to start exceeding user expectations. You can start to engage based on behavior or you can start to deliver additional services that users might not expect beforehand. So there's actually a, quite a lot of um, uh, reasons why you should care about automation and why it's very important to start learning a little bit more around that. Today, we're presenting the Automation Days Asia. So it kind of looks like uh, automation is something from the last few years. But this is actually not the case. And I always like to put automation a little bit into its historic perspective to showcase where we are today so that you can also start uh, learning and preparing on where we will be going tomorrow. Automation is not something new entirely. It can even be stated that it dates back to even prehistoric times when people started to automate the first things like clocks in order to track dates and times. But where automation started to get a significant business impact is obviously when companies started with mechanical automation, which was in the early 1800s and is famously known by the Industrial Revolution. Through mechanical automation, it became possible to complete work in a more quick and faster fashion than doing things manually. After that, we started to uh, do things even quicker. And the reason that we're all behind a, a, a computer screen today is because of the invention of electrical automation circuits or networks for the people who have some background in electrical engineering. With the invention of the light bulb, which was famously accredited, famously accredited to Thomas Edison, a new wave of automation started through which we could work together in a faster and more efficient manner. Electrical circuits are also a form of automation. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to go into that in too much depth today, but this represented the next major wave in automation. Then another significant way in which we could automate even faster is with the invention of the computer chip. Computer chips made it possible to process data in a tremendously more uh, uh, fast fashion than po was possible through mechanical or electrical automation. The computer chip is basically the invention um, um, with the semiconductor that made it possible to start um, um, building automations that can be conducted within milliseconds. Upon this processing automation, we started to build applications. And this is what you will probably most be familiar with. Many organizations today are using applications in order to automate any kind of process that they're using in their companies from finance to HR, towards bookings, orders, all of these are typically supported nowadays through processes in software applications. And with process automation, 
we are able to expedite and deliver that even faster. However, the main point that I want to make is that if you place these waves into perspective, today we have arrived at the point of service automation in which we are not just going to automate an individual process like a finance process, but in which companies are striving to create a complete digital user experience, which is fully automated. And I'd like you to think back again about the fundamental question that I started with today. Have you ever spoken to one, towards one of the companies that are actually delivering automated services? The answer to that question is probably no, because the whole customer journey and all of the steps in between are completely delivered in a completely automated fashion. And this is a big shift from process automation towards service automation. How can you start to establish, how can you start to create a way in which all of your users will engage and will work together with your company and start to consume services in a completely automated manner? And that's the next major trend that I want you to be aware of about. And now that you've seen these waves, the other key thing that I would like you to take away from these slides is that these windows are getting shorter. So whereas mechanical automation probably to, to, took around 200 years to develop, process automation was already developed into 40, 30 years. And the next wave of service automation is even going to be shorter. So it's time to start learning about automation right now. And it's uh, also imperative that you start thinking about how can your organization deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. So I always think it's good to, in order to uh, know where you're going, it's always good to kind of see where you are and where, how, how things fit within into a historical perspective. Why is this important? Well, what I hope you will take out of these next two days is to get some inspiration on how you can get started on an automation journey within your organization itself. Personally, I had the luck to guide a lot of companies on their automation journey. And based upon that, we started to look at the common steps, a framework, if you would like to call it uh, this way, on what are the typical steps that you need to go through. And for today's session, I focused on a number of key elements that are going to be crucial, important. I'm going to focus mostly on the framework element, and I'm also going to focus a little bit around the leadership uh, element. With the reason that I've chosen these subjects is that within the next two days, there are going to be uh, a number of other very uh, well-known speakers that are going to focus on the technological aspects. So what I want to do today is kind of start with the business requirements and start to look at how can you get started with this from a management and from a leadership perspective. And it all starts with understanding the business requirements and problem. Before you start with any automation project, the first step that you would need to, to know is understand how users, how your customers are consuming your services. Because in the end, automation is nothing else than a number of workflows, a number of scripts that need to be running. So you cannot automate a bad business process. So start from the beginning and start to, to review what your business requirements and problems actually are. Then in step number two, we're going to coordinate with the business as well as the technology in order to uh, make sure that we can develop different uh, solutions. So different automated journeys or different automated services. And then as a major next third step, we would need to validate the automation solution. So I know that these are three very high level steps and obviously we can break them down. So we complete this model and framework a little bit more in detail. Then it all starts with a strategy. You cannot get started on any automation journey without having a good strategy in place. Um, one of the, the famous quotes that I always like to use in all my presentations if, is, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And that is the, uh, the, the essence of strategy. Start thinking about how you can deliver your service in this completely automated way. What would the ideal picture look like? And base your strategy around that. 
After that, you would need to start diving deeper. So from your strategy, you would need to start thinking about which services would be very suitable for automation. There are a couple of best practices and typically automation starts in shared service centers or in very uh, automation intensive processes. So think about a finance department, think about IT or think about HR. Reason that these are very suitable use cases is because they process a lot of information on a daily basis. And in almost all cases, these are very repetitive steps. After that, after we've identified a strategy and we've looked at which department we're going to create a use case, then it's time to start creating our business case. The business case is the financial aspect because yes, you will need to invest in automation solutions and uh, invest in knowledge and getting people up to speed with regards to automation. But there's also gonna, gonna be a lot of benefits. So in the business case, you're going to weigh off the investments versus the uh, benefits and looking for whether this project makes sense from a business point of view. In many cases, you will see that the business case for automation is pretty sound and can be earned back within a couple of weeks or months. After that, the hard part starts. So we need to get make, make sure that there is management consensus on the next steps to take. And then we're going to get started with individual steps of an automated services. This is also where RPA comes in. RPA stands for Robotic Process Automation and is going to look at individual elements within a customer journey. So whereas service automation is delivering the service from beginning to end completely automated, individual steps of that ser service can be automated. So think about an automated payment process or automated booking of an invoice. You can use RPA technology in order to do that. And our next two speakers from this morning are going to dive into that aspect into quite more detail. And then last but not least, automation is going to change the way we work. It's going to change the way that people operate and work together. So you would need to think about some documentation and, uh, and looking at the impact on your organization. So this is a high level framework on how to get started on an automation journey. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that. And what I would like you to focus on this morning as some form of inspiration is looking at the crucial skills that are necessary on that automation journeys. A lot of research has been done in this field. And if we look at what our leaders should have that are driving these uh, initiatives, we've come up with a number of crucial skills that are necessary. First of all, getting uh, uh, towards automated ser services requires innovation. Thinking about how you could change an existing service, how you could use an exi or change an existing process and doing that in a completely automated way. In order to do that, you need to combine innovation with a particular vision. And it's my strong belief that organizations that are able to do this better than their competitors will ultimately win in the data economy. Because if you are able to execute these processes faster or with more uh, uh, um, uh, accuracy or in a more cost efficient manner, then ultimately you're going to surpass your competitors who might not be on this journey. So that's a really crucial thing to understand. So combining innovation, vision, and therefore also business understanding are crucial skills in order to start driving any automation journey. And yes, it will require some creativity as well. Because if you think about all of those successful companies that we started to discuss at the beginning of this presentation, we saw that most of these did not even exist 10 or 15 years ago. So they disrupted the, the industry because they had a different vision on how products and services can be delivered in the digital age. So that's also something to really uh, understand is that you would need to think about different ways in which existing companies can operate. So how do we do that? How are we going to make sure that this can actually be done? Well, there's three, most, uh, three major conceptual elements that are necessary in any kind of automation project. 
And that is how do we transfer uh, data to information? So how are we using the, the data that we currently have and how can we transform that into something useful in an, and then in an automated ma um, uh, manner? The second um, major element that I would like you to think about is only source data curation. And that what we mean with that is how does data get into the organization and goes out of it? And how can we build with, uh, how can we manage these data pipelines in order to make the most adequate and accurate predictions? So this is where we can start to implement uh, processes to immediately, as, as soon as we see something like a sale or marketing campaign activity, that we can take an action immediately. And this is only possible within split seconds if you're using automation itself. And then the last major conceptual idea to think about is how to multi-source uh, trend tracking. So combining data from a variety of different sources so that they, um, uh, these data sources can be used in order to drive your decision-making on a day-to-day -day basis. So you see that we're already going one level deeper into some of the the skills and knowledge areas that you would need to think about in order to start de defining your automated services and solutions. Good. So now that I've given you a bit of an overview of what the background, the skills and the knowledge is that is required in order to be successful with automation, I've also prepared some inspiration and some best practices on how to actually get started. In my conversations with companies, we frequently get asked the question, you know, we kind of understand the necessary and necessity to get started with this. We understand how important this is towards future decision making, but how do we actually get started? So in this last um, 10 minutes of, of our opening uh, presentation, I'd like you to show you some best practices on how you can get started with automation yourself. And what would be a typical journey that people and organizations take in order to move towards the delivery of these automated services? Because it's not as simple as it all sounds. So let's start with looking at some key activities in the implementation of automation. From our research and our experience over the years, we've seen that successful automation culminates in five core activities, which in, in, involve different stakeholders within the organization. And this aligns with the circle and the framework that I showed you a couple of slides earlier. It all starts with strategy. And strategy in itself is nothing else than prioritization on what elements are important, how can we ensure that the right business decisions are, make, are made, and how do we prioritize different automation initiatives. So on the left-hand side of this slide, you will see prioritization of your automation in initiatives. And in order to do that, you will need to have a fundamental insight into the business processes that your organization currently has and how you can make a competitive differentiation in the market in the years to come. After that, we need to start thinking about how does the next stage look like? And this is what we're going to be doing through requirements collection. What is it that we would need to build? How can we make a good process map? And I'll show you that in the next uh, few slides. And how can we then get started with building that up? Then we're actually going to get our hands dirty and start optimizing and start de developing uh, automated processes. So in the third step, which you see in the middle of this slide, it's time to start process automation itself. In this stage, you would need to have people with the knowledge and skills on how to build automations, how to set up workflows, or for instance, how to design scripts in order to do that. After those first initial use cases have been developed, those use cases will be released towards the live environment, which is known as the solution release. In this stage, we're going to be delivering automated services in a number of first use cases so that the organization gets known to the idea of automated service delivery and that they can start to see what the benefits are on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I always say that automation never stops. The last stage is obviously continuous monitoring and improvement, looking at which automations work, where there might be opportunities for further improvement. And if you see that people are actually using and enjoying the use of these automated services, then that is a strong indication that you're on the right track. 
So this is a high level way in, in order to look at the way that um, automated services are being delivered on a day-to-day -day basis. So crucial activities to consider. So I'd like to focus a little bit deeper onto that middle step, process automation, because there's always a lot to do about that. Um, in the next few um, lectures from some of the other speakers, we're going, you're going to be hearing a lot about process automation. And before you dive into that, I want you to really fundamentally understand what we mean with that. So a process in any organization is a set of interrelated activities that transforms an input to an output. Classic example is always to think about from the moment that you receive an invoice from a supplier until the moment that that invoice has been paid out and the money's on the bank account of the supplier. That's a process with a number of different steps in between. And we're gonna be using automation to look at those processes and how we can create value to transform that input into an out output in a logical and preferably automated member. And the beautiful thing about building different automations is that the input of one process can be the output of another. And whereas, for instance, the automated uh, payment of, a, of an, a supplier invoice is the output of one process, this can be the input for, for instance, a monthly reconciliation report that would be necessary for the CFO. So by starting to look at an organization as a number of key critical processes, you can start to combine and automate processes one by one. And that will mean that you will get a library of automated services. In tomorrow's workshop, which is going to be about service automation blueprinting, I will do a more hands-on uh, explanation and deep dive in how you can build a catalog of those automated services by yourself. But for now, I just want you to know what a process looks like. So as soon as you've, see, uh, you've started to analyze your particular business process, you will start to see that there are a number of crucial steps within that process. So before you can get started with any, the delivery or the design of any automation, you first need to start thinking and analyzing what does my business process look today? So if I go back towards the same example, think about the moment that you're receiving an invoice towards the moment it needs to be paid, what are all the steps in between? And the most important part or output of this exercise is that you start to define what we refer to as an as-is process map. And that means what is the situation as you currently have it today? Because even if you don't use any automation today, your organization will definitely use processes. If you're an organization in operation, you will definitely receive invoices. So there is, no, no matter how manual it might be, there's always a process in place. It might not be visualized, it might not have been documented, but the first key step before you can start with any automation is to define what that as-is process map looks like. And based upon that current situation, based upon the processes that your organization currently has, then you can start to think about, well, what will be my next step? What will be my to-be process map? And that's the major steps that you would need to take in a successful automation journey. And that is really that, that uh, step onto how do we get from that as-is process map that we've seen on the previous slide towards that to-be process map meaning that we're, we're need, we need to first visualize where we are today versus where we would like to be tomorrow. And places again into the bigger perspective of the framework that I presented earlier. Look at which processes to focus on. That's a, an aspect of prioritization. And that will relate back towards your overall business strategy. Which services might be useful to be started to be delivered completely automatically? And where can we make a competitive advantage? So if you follow these steps, then it will become actually, well, I'm not going to say easy, but it will become structured in a way in that you can start to automate your different services from having no automated processes at all towards completely automated delivery, uh, delivery of services. And I'd like to close with a particular example. So if you look at an as-is process flowchart, I've just used a very simple example right here, is that from the moment that, for instance, you receive a particular email with a particular purchase order, 
then what you would normally do is you would uh, open and save that somewhere on your file. You would put it into an ERP system. You would like, create a new sales order for a particular supplier. Then you're going to ship the, the PO towards the supplier itself. So there's a number of different steps uh, that that as is process goes through. And every organization, no matter how small or how large or which industry you're in, will actually have that. And the, the crucial step that you would need to start identifying is how do we move from this as is process flowchart towards this to be flowchart. And what we would like you to think about is how can we combine manual steps uh, with automated steps? So are there ways in which we can automate these processes and come up with a better design that we can then put into any kind of tool or RPA solution in order to create this automated process. And that's the key trick. So before you start coding, before you start uh, configuring all kinds of different tools, the first thing to think about is what is my process? What does it look like? And how can we start to deliver an automated version of this particular process? Because as soon as you're able to do that, that's when you start building your catalog of automated services. And it means also that it becomes easier to maintain them and you have the ability to make further improvements towards the future. So make sure that you're going into these right steps. There's a lot of technology that can support that, but the fundamental idea of building a process and building an automated process is crucial towards success in automation. So what I've been talking about in the last um, uh, slides, and we're unfortunately almost coming towards the end of the session, is what is the steps you should take and that you could take in order to start delivering automated services? I've kind of summarized the steps on this last slide. So start all the way from the strategic aspect, so look at your business objectives, all the way towards steps uh, number um, um, six, which is the as-is process, towards step number nine, which is the implementation of the to-be process. So this is the, the, the 10 golden rules that we typically see within automation. And this is what can help you on your automation journey as well. So last key slide for this morning session, couple of key things that I always want you to take away. So at the end of every session, I always want you to take away a couple of key things. First of all, uh, the reason for joining this conference and being part and, and asking questions is notes that we've entered this age of uh, automation. Automation is significantly going to change businesses. And uh, if you um, get on this card, you can really get a competitive advantage for your organization. We also looked at leadership and skills. Successful automation is not just done by programming. You need to have a strategy. You need to have skills. You need to have creativity, as we discussed. We also looked at the framework and some of the five crucial activities in implementing automation. And the last key thing that I want you to take away is how do you move from that as is process towards the to be process. And if you do all of these things well, then you will uh, thrive and you will get your organization also in this journey and competi a competitive race towards using automation for business benefit. I'd like to uh, thank everyone for this uh, great talk. I've seen quite a number of questions coming in on my side screen. So I'd like to uh, moderate some of the questions right now. Let me stop the screen and we'll go towards some of the questions. We have a couple of question or minutes left. Good. First question that I've seen come in is from Anne. What is the difference between service and process automation? Is the approach the same? It's a very good question. Um, and it's a question that I get actually asked a lot. Um, there's actually quite a good difference between the two. So service automation looks at the end-to-end -end delivery of a service experience. So the example that I gave earlier, for instance, think about Grab. From the moment that you press a button towards the moment that the taxi is there and that it will bring you from point A to B towards the fact that your credit card is being swiped, that's an automated service. So service automation focuses on delivering a value chain all the way from the beginning, all the way towards the end. That value chain will consist of a number of supporting processes. So think about the fact that your credit card needs to be swiped. 
or the fact that there needs to be some kind of a message to rate the driver. You can use robotic process automation to power or to automate those individual processes because many cases they are across different IT systems. So that makes it difficult to um, uh, integrate all of them within a single workflow. So there's a quite a good relationship between service automation and, um, and RPA, but I would summarize it in such a way to say that RPA uh, powers uh, service automation uh, in the back end, and, uh, and one automated service can have multiple RPA implementations. I hope that that answers your question, but it's actually quite a good one. Good. I also um, see or get a quick message um, that we are out of time for our first session. So what I would like to you to um, uh, see or what I'd like to end with is note that in 50 minutes, we will start with our next um, speaker. Our next speaker is going to be um, um, Eric. Eric is going to start uh, talking about um, RPA into quite a lot of details. So you will see him up, up next. Um, that leaves me with nothing else than to really thank you for um, participating in this next um, or in this first session. I hope it provided you with some good inspiration and I really encourage you to, to really uh, dive into the sessions you want to join for these next few days um, and uh, make the most of this conference. Thanks everyone for joining this first session and I hope I'd like to see all of you back at 10 